way to the London Women's Clinic in Brentwood. Yeah, at the Nafood uh, Health. Nafood Hospital. That's it. Um, yeah. So, don't know how long the appointment's going to be, no. but yeah, it should be an interesting appointment. So. No, neither am I. I think because I know it's just a standard mm. thing and because I kind of know what the next step is anyway. I just feel, you know, it's an appointment sort of thing, so yeah. Anyway, we'll let you guys know what happens with it. And, uh, Fertility is up pretty much 10% from what it was. I think it was at zero before. Yeah, so the motility was 10%, which is much better. Yeah, but the um, count was a lot lower. But they said to us when we when Charlotte reminded me that uh, that it doesn't matter what the count is because they can still use anything. Yeah. And yeah, it was it, it could be that it was just not a not a good day and it was an off day for me. Um it could be nothing 
could or be genetics. something it could be genetic it could be something but yeah this was a lot lot lower than the count I had last time about a year or so ago yeah. so I think we're gonna go to the doctors they're gonna read the letter that the fertility clinic are going to send them and uh, hopefully, hopefully the GP will refer you yeah. for further testing yeah and find out if there's any any reason why this time it was a lot lower yeah um, what's going on really. yeah and what's going on yeah um, but apart from that side of stuff it was an interesting appointment so yeah it's just tablets and I will have two to three scans done so it's not as much as last month um no injections yeah, no injections the injections i've had left over from last month they've told me to hang on to just in case um there are police behind us by the way okay <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, I just don't want them pulling us over, over mid video, being like, what are you doing? <laughs> it would make a fun video, to it be would. fair. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to really say. Yeah, it's mainly about getting you checked out. Yeah, but and, um, uh, we've got a, a pretty much next month is the end of next month will be your next period yeah so we'll start mid month in may to have it put back in for the next yeah she was saying that because my period's are on the 30th of april so she said we're probably looking at around the 16th to the 20th of may to have the embryo put back in yeah so um I mean, there's, a, there's a few bank holidays isn't there so they said yeah. that if we have to be uh, scanned on the bank holiday or on the weekend, we're going to head up to Harley, Harley Street. Street. Yeah, um, there was a lot said, wasn't there? There was, yeah, I'm trying to think of everything that went on. She, uh, yeah, so they'll, they'll only freeze because our embryos have been frozen separately, they'll just freeze one at um, uh, take one out of the freezer at a time. So she said if one doesn't survive the um, defrosting, I suppose, um, then they'll call us, tell us, and get our permission to defrost another one. And yeah, we so seem to have got two fresh cycles on NHS. Um, and, and she fresh. said that she needs to talk to her NHS colleague, but normally they offer a frozen cycle with each fresh. We've used one fresh, we'll be using one frozen, Yeah. and then we'll have another frozen, and another fresh, and then another fresh. so, but yeah. then we'll still have two frozen, won't we, left over, yeah, that we she won't said be able that we to have to, the NHS. no, she said that, and, and we have to use a frozen first, yeah, for the NHS, so, it looks like if it comes to it, that we use a second round of frozen on the NHS if we need it. But anyway, we're going, we're, we won't look at that. No, no, but it's just interesting to, to, to know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the focus at the moment is just on round two. Round two. So, and yeah. uh, getting me checked. Yeah. Which hopefully they'll do quickly. But Nothing also, came back bad before on my blood test, but it could be all different now. Because it yeah. was a while ago now. Yeah, but the blood test was just checking for hormones. Yeah. Whereas the further test they need to do is checking for the genetic side yeah. of stuff. Yeah, just wish they would have done it to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, she said they don't tend to refer straight away because it's an expensive thing for them to do. Yeah. And so they just focus on the women. And I did ask, can we privately fund the check with yeah. them? And they said because it's uh, NHS funded so far, they can't put the two together we have to go to an independent place get them to check it or go back to the NHS and they refer us yeah. which which we're going to do anyway so we'll go with the NHS referral yeah. to us 
that specialised. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I and they said with a frozen cycle you do go up to three pessaries a day. She called them rectally, didn't she? Yeah, you do them rectally. Yay. But well, she said you can do them either entrance, doesn't matter. Um Yeah, so said on the day of the transfer they want you to do them rectally. Yeah, so, because otherwise it agitates and you could, yeah, uh, you could upset things. Upset things, yeah. Yeah, so that's that. Yeah. So anyway, we'll say hello again when we're at BQ. Yeah, and it's it's a discount for pensioners. pensioners day, so it's probably going to be busy. Yeah. And it's sunny, so I'm sure people are buying gardens. Yeah, there, that's so. true. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't really work because we're chopping them. No. I quite like those ones though. Mm.
I'm not saying. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so you've been cracking on with bits, haven't you? Yeah, so I went out downstairs and then I tidied up this room to get it ready for yeah, you've, filming you've it. Yeah, you probably see we've changed room. So, yeah. Yeah, might change seats because these are creaking. Yeah, but, I think they're fine. Yeah, I don't like hard backs, but they were. <laughs> um, mm. Looks like it's healing. Yeah. So, Richard suffers with psoriasis. It's got bigger that side, and then mm. it's like a half, it's a half moon now. Yeah, there's a bit just below his knee. Looks like it's healing up there. But yeah, anyway, um, yeah, I've been alright, I've just been catching up on Home and Away and Neighbours, really. Mm. It's very windy. <laughs> um, yeah, and then while I was sort of at this room, I thought I'd listen to some podcasts about IVF. I have to see about this room because it's quite echoey. Yeah, we'll see how it comes out. Yeah. But um, yeah, there was one from the BBC, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, no, I can't, I don't think I've got my, my no. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but I'm sure I'll put it in the description. But yeah, the person on there, the couple there, they're, they did, they've done six IVF treatments. And um, on the last one, they recorded it and they put, did it as the first episode of this BBC Sounds podcast. And um, yeah, it was just very, uh, very brutal hearing the the them talk about where well, you could hear them saying we've just done the pregnancy test and like they go through the whole journey, but they get to the pregnancy test and they said, all right, it's been a minute, let's turn it over. And then she just starts crying because it's a negative. Mm. Yeah, and then that just set me off. And she was blaming herself because it's all, all things that, um, because they can't get pregnant because of her. And then that just made me feel worse because like with the results today of the, of the um, sperm uh, count. But yeah, it just made me feel horrid. Yeah, he came downstairs in tears. So, yeah, but you can't blame yourself. Like no. the doctor said to me in the room when I asked if it was my fault. And she immediately said, no, 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 no. Big red cross, no. Do not blame yourself. Blame him. <laughs> she did not say that, just no, to clear yeah. that up. But no, you can't blame yourself. No. And there's plenty of men out there with a low sperm count who have got kids. Yeah, I know, it just, it just set me off. Yeah, I and, think it's uh, been a tougher day probably for you than for me today. Yeah, like after, after hearing, hearing that this morning, I could feel it was, I like it on there. <laughs> People don't know what we're talking Sorry. about. he's got something on his thumb. Got plaster from the wall downstairs on my thumb. So I was just trying to pick it off because it looks like a piece of paper. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can't remember what I was saying now, thanks. Sorry. Um, I can't remember <laughs> what I was saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, when I uh, went to my appointment, I um, I decided to do a little thing to the camera oh, yeah. about how I was feeling in the car. That's good. Yeah, and that made me feel better afterwards. Good. But I know there's like the blastocyst stage is what we need and that got put back into you. It just just set me off thinking that it's all my fault. Yeah. But I mean as she said in the room, you know, it could be any number of reasons. Mm. And then I it set me off worse because I was thinking, do you think I've been thinking it's your fault? In fact, I've never thought it's your fault. I never think it's yours. Yeah. I think it's just one of those things and we got to keep working at it. Yeah. Yeah, I've got up to quite a few episodes of this podcast now because it's only about 20 minutes long. And now they're um, 
because they they spoke to someone who did egg donation mm -hmm. and now they're talking to someone who's done adoption and it's just it's a, like the way having someone else in their lives it's made them so happy when they didn't think it would they thought it was going to be so difficult yeah um and they were they, i haven't finished it yet but they were just talking about the adoption blues it's like after you've gone through all that process of trying to adopt you then feel quite down so yeah must be very difficult especially when you're trying to you, you you're trying to justify it all by saying i'm helping a child out of get out of a hard life yeah. and come into a loving relationship where all they all the people want is uh, someone to love and it's like I, that, that part of me is like yeah I, in a in a way it's like when you have a pet mm. and all you do is show that pet love and it just feels like once they're gone you'd be so upset like if Twitchy dies you'd just be so upset that he's not there anymore it's sort of the yeah. same sort of thing. You just show you something so much love that it becomes a part of your family. Yeah. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't. Uh, it shouldn't seem alien. Like it does, I reckon, to some people. Mm. Like you go through all that hard um, work with IVF, and you, you walk down some some high street. And you've got like your experience the other week of the mum and the two men talking yeah. about where they're going to get their next fix, where they got the baby in the push chair. Yeah, that yeah. was not fair. It's not, yeah, it just seems not fair. Yeah. But. You can't keep looking at things like that though. No. Yeah. And things have their reasons, it's just. Exactly. It's just because you don't hear about it enough. Yeah. Uh, we'll, I think for the moment we'll focus on our next round. See you there. Twitchy! I can hear him. What have I done? There we are. I keep my feet down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think for the moment we'll focus on the next round of IVF. Yeah, hopefully I'll be better tomorrow. Yeah. But um, I was thinking if I don't, I might speak to the counselor. Counselor, yeah. yeah. Good idea. Yeah. But you, oh, I, was, I think the bit I in, got interrupted on was I could feel myself after the. Um, after being like talking to them this morning, I could feel myself getting to a point where like I don't feel happy and I could feel that I was going to end up being either sad or down or something and then that that podcast just set me off in that the 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 the, the, the woman just started crying mm. just set me off she was saying how she wanted to be a mum then since she knew that she could be like since knowing about the reproduction. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's the first podcast I've listened to about um, IVF and and uh, fertility. I think I'm glad I cried because it got it out. A bit. It got it out, and I, for some reason in me, I just wasn't. It just didn't phase me too much. This whole thing, it just felt like we were getting along really well with it. Yeah. I suppose it's a bit of a. Is it? I don't know. It just felt so normal to be going through IVF, whereas now it just, it feels like, it's, not so normal anymore. Yeah. I don't know, I that's don't just know. how I felt about yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. But I think 
I mean, did you want to keep doing daily videos or do you want to go down to a week? Um, Should we do a daily one tomorrow? Do a daily one tomorrow, you know, see how we feel. Yeah. And we're up to what episode? Oh, five minutes. This would be number 39, so we'll do mm -hmm. 40 tomorrow and then we can do one or two more to get us up to the weekend. Yeah, we'll see how we go. But we are looking at going to a weekly video. We'll record every day, but... Yeah, we'll up. still record daily, but we'll just do one big, like, week video for people to see rather than daily as we're just having a yeah. month off. <laughs> so... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll leave this one here. And we'll check in tomorrow. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.